Welcome back, hunters. I'm the Survivalist, and we return to Monster Hunter Build a Bowgun series. So last week we tackled the roaring mad lad himself, Tigrex. Now we're going to a sneaky, stealthy cousin, the ever elusive Nargakuga. Now Narga has been a monster that has been basically featured ever since his first flagship appearance in Freedom Unite and my first Monster Hunter game. He's always been in the series. And if you've ever fought Narga, you know that he is a stealthy, ambush, quick on his feet, agile predator, basically an apex of stealth. And a lot of his weapons and armor do convey that kind of sense of just how fast, fleet-footed, and elusive he can be. And we're going to try to change his bowgun a little bit, because it's a bit of an oddity if you look hard at it, but as a little way of showing you what we're kind of working with a on kind of his armor sets and that, here's a little look at some of his armoring. As you can see, it's basically ninja vibe to it. It's all this kind of stealth, let's get a bigger one, here you go. All the dark scales and everything, just kind of the layering and that, it all feels stealthy ninja vibe. And a lot of his armors and weapons show that. The bow, you can see just like the very... Well, actually, the weapons have a little bit of an oddity to them, because they feature a lot of this weird big built-in bone stuff like every weapon of his well almost every weapon has it but it's kind of an odd addition to it in a way because I don't remember and I don't think any of Freedom Unite really had this this almost seems like a world thing coming backwards in a way because it feels like a base with some of the parts put on but others are sublime like this is another one where it's that Narga bony mix for the heavy bow gun Freedom Unite but the great sword you do have the bony base, but you see all of Narga's stuff, and I may be incorrect here, but I think using the Greatsword, if you get up to level 3 charge, you actually get some of the Narga spines stick out more, so it kind of is like a cosmetic effect that it kind of, when fully charged, it looks even more badass than it is. But other weapons, like the Longsword, you can see are very stealthy, dark, hidden coloring, and one of the more iconic ones are his dual blades. Unfortunately, Iceborne is not given these dual blades with it. Hopefully a modder, well, I just think a modder would easily work at bringing that in because it's such an iconic weapon. But today, we're going to look at Narkuga's light bowgun. And when we think of stealth, hidden ambush predator, nothing else comes to mind than double barrel shotgun, y'all. Yeehaw! Seriously, that's what I really get the most from the vibe here, is the double barrel shotgun of it. You can see how Narga is incorporated with the stock and the limbs, but still, you're hiding a sh double barrel shotgun underneath, and that's not exactly stealthy. I mean, I will give you credit that, okay, if you want to be stealthy and you're up against one thing, a double barrel shotgun shot to the back of the head will probably keep you stealth, and they will not realize what happened till they're in the afterlife. But we're going to look at maybe redesigning the light bow in a little bit, something that's a little more sleeker and stealthy than Narga is. And just as comparison of what Iceborne is bringing for Narga, it is... Well, I know it's very pixelated and poor, so I'll zoom out, but it's basically another of the base metal bowgun with some strappings on it. Like you can see, if I zoom in, it does have the silencer, the limbs are just kind of the feathers out a bit, and the stock is a kind of a weird one. It's a bone tail with the feathers coming off. It's... Just kind of odd, in my opinion. So what we're going to do is basically redesign the bowgun right from the ground up. And the reason, and let me show you the template I got first. This is what we're working with. And yes, it's not because my artistic skills have gotten even worse since the last episode. It's because if we're going to think of something sleek, stealthy, ambushy, we want small, compact, I think, to start with. And this design has basically just taken the... Rush Shard, God's Isle, whatever you want to call it. Just kind of the simple musket style bowgun that's in every Monster Hunter. I think the most recent one is the Dai Oni Gishima or something like that for name. Anyway, we're going to start with this. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to start from... Oh, let me get the colors right. The barrel and work back. Tigrex, we started the other way. Narga, we'll start this way. The first thing I want to do is we'll probably extend the barrel so that way it feels more like a rifle almost. Let me just, actually, let me get this nice and zoomed in so I can make sure everything's nice and level. I say that and immediately screw that up. Okay. There we go. And let's get up, I think, out there to there. We'll extend that out a little more. 
We're not going to fill the... Actually, hang on. Before I do that, I want to make a new layer. I'm going to be better about this. This is going to be barrel. I want to be better about this and make sure everything is right here. So let's just quickly start that again. New. Need to be a little further down. That's probably a little bit too far. Nah, eh, just a little. So anyway, we'll just do a quick thing like that. Quickly use the white. So we'll extend the barrel to make it more sort of like a rifle-esque look than just the short kind of muzzle or blunderbuss look. Now, for how Narga is, the one thing I want to incorporate is that beak for the very front of it, because Narga always has this sharp, piercing beak on the front. No matter how you see it, it's always a major feature of Kuga. So we're going to look at putting that on first. And unfortunately, my artistry skills are pretty lacking, so that's why it's mostly just going to be side view. If there's anything I think I can try giving a little bit more detail to, I probably will in little snippets or blown out parts or sections. But for now, we'll probably stick to just these side views. So Narga's beak, let's get a nice side. There we go. So it's a, it actually comes down to a couple of points. Because you can see there's this tip right at the front here. Then there are the ones at the back. So we'll probably start with that. So let's do... We'll worry about the front right now, so that kind of comes down to a point like that. Something like that, and then let's start back here, get another point like that. Now we want to take that up, almost like a barrel cover. And what we'll probably do, is, as you can see, Narga has some long ears that go back. Just our stealth kitty, basically. So we're going to incorporate those into the bowgun's limbs. So we're going to make those go back a little more, and then like that, and that will probably be the little barrel cover of sorts. So we'll bring that forward a bit, line it up with that. Get everything going right? Yeah, we can just fill it right in like that. And that's a very dark color to start with, but it should be an okay base. We're just going to go in and Actually, you know what? Maybe we will keep the barrel a little exposed underneath, as if the beak is parted in half. Like, let me see. As I was saying about doing the sections. So we'll say, okay, do, 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 do. Yes, I know it's horrible, but we'll say this is going to be our barrel of the bow gun. So we'll give it the black interior there. Get the, ooh, my bad there. Alright, as you can see, there's still some things I need to improve upon, but we'll get that up, and now we can fill that in properly. So let's use our gray. Yeah, slap just like that. So Narga's beak would probably dip down like that, right at the very center a little bit. We'd probably go like that up. I want to say I want to have something like this almost. So that way it almost is like an owl beak of sorts when you're looking straight onto it. I know that's, I think, how when they sort of designed it originally, Narga's bowgun was meant to look. Like a little something sort of like this. Let me just try getting this edge a little bit more black. But something where you can see the barrel still, but it's tucked behind the Narga head. There it goes, so just kind of that as the bit of a vibe for it. So now going into some details here, we are going to lighten that color up quite a bit. And Narga, it's usually a black, almost navy blue coloring. Like a lot of his weapons all use the dark, very dark black, so we'll just go and we'll slide our way up here. Nice dark like that, there we go. Something a little more like that. And then for the ears, they do have the red right in there, so we will incorporate that into Narga as well. Let's just get that tucked in there, like that. And a nice bright red, because Narga, well, maybe not quite super bright. Oh, I see where I forgot. One of the things about working with some pixel ones, it's easy to see where you might have forgotten a little something. If you can see proper, there we go. 
Yeah, that's a very nice little addition there. Now, one thing I will add, actually, let me take a look. Anything else for Nargus we should do? I wouldn't mind giving it a little bit of features in that barrel. Like, almost just small little sections of sorts. Almost like little highlights in a way. We'll make a little bit of more of a grayish. Something kind of like that a bit. And I just want to go around the outside of what we did here. Just to make it stand out a little easier about looking at it. One of the things I do like is giving everything a little bit of a black outline. Just feels like it sort of brings it all together. And thankfully, this is one of the reasons why I like working with just the pixel in a way, because it's a lot easier to go about and do certain little touch-ups here and there. Like all oh, this just nice and easy to go right down, complete a lot of it. There we go, and the rest we'll just take our little tool and quickly color in. Okay, so I think that's a good, ooh, good look for the barrel to start with. I will probably do one thing more towards the end, but that'll be, like I say, towards the end. So now if we go along, if we look at some of the other things, Narga, like the double barrel shotgun, the barrel is mostly exposed. And a lot of the weapons do have a lot of this almost bone-esque base to it, so maybe we will incorporate a little bit of that and change the color of the barrel a bit. Ooh, right, gotta let me make a new layer, and this will be the more framework. Actually, no, because we're still working on the barrel, we'll keep this layer as our active. So I just gotta go in and do a little thing for it. What probably what I'll do is we'll put almost like a little strap of sorts, just to say that's kind of secured where it is. Up there and up like that. And now if we go in and just do that more kind of bright, there we go, something like that. And we'll use our color like that again, just to say that's almost like a strap securing it in place, although maybe we'll make it larger. like that. Actually, maybe even just give it just a little thing, like a little touch-up part. Okay, so I think that's a pretty good barrel to start with. Now along here, I do want to give it a little more, because one of the things about Narga is definitely that tail. And I don't think I want to give this a very large stock or very long stock. I do want to incorporate a little bit more of Narga's kind of flair into things. So what I'm thinking is maybe doing something almost like a little bit of a barrel wrapping in a way. Like give it sort of, a, almost like a ghillie net-ish sort of styling. So let me just say, we'll work from here. We'll go down, kind of make it almost like a torn tarp. So that secures that ring there. like that, and actually before I forget, I'll just connect that to say the string is there. Okay, so let's fill this in proper. No, actually, before I do that, you know what, I'm going to change that to just the kind of blue we've been working with, so we keep that dark outline. What we're going to do here is we're basically going to just do a bunch of diamond patterns in a way. Just because Narga is usually depicted in having that patterning to his stuff. Like, if we take a look at the armor, you can see it's this kind of hexagon-esque patterning. Yeah. Patterning, scaling, layering a bit to it, so we'll try to give that a little feel off. Almost like it's a ghillie net protecting a sniper behind this. And I may get re Ooh, not quite there. There we go. I may get requests about getting the, rear the heavy bowgun redesigned as well, because I have to admit, 
The heavy bowgun is actually more of just how Monster Hunter Freedom Unite had a few base bowgun looks to it. Because if you play World and you've seen my heavy bowgun showcase, that's actually the exact same model as the Kirin heavy bowgun. The only difference is the texturing on it. Just quickly do a few more. Oh. And this also, oh, come on, no, there we go. This might also kind of click in for a few people that this could also be seen sort of like panther patterning or stuff like that, or leopard print. And that's basically what a lot of Narga's design is, is that he's like a owl panther cat in a way. Anyway, we'll just do one more here. Something a little bit like that, and just fill those in. might actually even make this a lighter color. You know what, we'll see what we kind of get on the look back. I want something sort of like that, almost like a camouflage net to help hide the rest of the gun behind it. Just to play into how Narga is such an ambush predator, you'd think he'd give you an ambush-like weapon as well. And well, something like that. And actually, maybe we'll even incorporate the net so it connects up here. And it covers all of this, too. That nice dark blue again. And just kind of color that up like that. And there we go. We just do a few more kind of things like that. Now this is, like I say, just rough work because I'm not exactly an artist in any way, shape, or form. I am inartistic, as I will always claim to be. Well, except maybe when it comes to writing. I think I may have potential to be a writer. But anyway, that's something not to worry about here, really. This will just be kind of show off my ideas of what might be a better looking design for some things. I think if we do just cover up some of what we've got along here now... That might be the ghillie net I'm sort of thinking of. Yeah, there we go. So that's a nice looking ghillie net. Now, we are going to make a new layer, and this is going to be the scope. Because I think if you're going to use an Argakuga, you do want him to be stealthy and also precise. If you've ever fought Narga, you know that he can be pretty accurate when he flings those claws and those little barbs from his tail, especially with his leaps, too. So we won't make anything quite too fancy, I don't think. Probably just do a simple kind of barrel scope. But enough so that way it seems like you're basically looking right down those little ear limbs that we are using for the bow part of the bow gun. Something just a little simple like that. And we're going to give it a couple of bands just to see how it's kind of connected in there. And I almost want to make this sort of like a hollow bracket in a way. Something kind of like that. So it does feel just a little more unique. So we'll get our more metal coloring for... Oh, right. And as you can see, I forgot to do one important thing, which was to basically close that off on this layer. So let's check again quickly. Uh, there's the tool I want. Grab our color. There we go. A few things like that, and then we'll use a brighter shade of gray for the banding. So something a little bit like that to start with. So I think that's a very good look for the barrel. Now we're moving along, and we'll probably change up next is we're going to do a new trigger for it. Because the God's Isle here is just a little simple, odd trigger look like that. So let's look at how we want to redesign this. I think we almost want to do it like a large trigger guard, so it does feel almost like a sniper rifle-esque in a way. Something kind of comes up like that. And let me see, I may have to do a little bit of covering up here, just to 
Yeah, there we go. Just so that way I can get a nice proper look in there that the old one isn't seen. Something that's just like your more modern-esque trigger. And guard and everything along with it. Instead of the usual... Ooh, actually, you know what? Before I do, I know I probably already forgot to, so we'll just quickly do that, and that should prevent us from covering the whole screen up. Yeah, there we go. And we'll just make sure for this part, too, we'll get that, that nicer kind of shine to it. Okay, there we go. So I think that is a good look at the barrel done. We got the kind of front end done, the net sort of feeling that I'm after. Now we'll work at doing the stock, and again, we'll do another layer. You can see that I have improved quite a bit over my Tigrex little version, haven't I? So, let's use the nice bright white just to kind of cover that entirely. I think we will maybe leave it just that bit of wood for now, or actually, not now. Nah, nah, nah. We're, if we're doing basically like a resign as we are, we're going to go right into things here. Don't need that big. I think just that should cover up the last I need. Yeah, just do a little bit like that. There we go. So how I want to do the stock is basically a lot like how I did Tyrexes, except I think I'd probably keep it more just to the very tip of the tail. So a very tapered, narrow stock. So that will probably just be a simple, we'll take the top here. Do a little do it. And, oh no, we gotta go actually one up. One up, there we go. And we'll say like right like that back in like that. So that way it literally just seems like it is Nargus Tail exactly. And we will do a little bit of something like this, just so that way Nar because Nargus Tail does kind of taper off into color as you see in old depiction. Well, maybe not there because the quills are coming off, but you can kind of see at the very tip there you get some lighter silvers and grays. So we'll incorporate that too. Get ourselves a very bright silver-esque one for there. Okay, that like that. And we'll go for more of a bluish. I kind of saw it. Maybe like that. There we go. Now a little darker blue to something like that. Well, oh, not quite that. something like that and let's just do these last little touch-ups to get the trigger again oh use the wrong gray on that no keep using the wrong gray on that come on okay that's the proper one there we go i lose track of the color sometimes but nothing that we can't really fix there we go something a little more like that basically a streamline actually something's missing Something is missing the more I look at this. This is reminding me of how I redid the Tigrex one in the end with the barrel. I think one of what it is is that you need something a little more for back end here. trigger for doing this proper. We'll make a smaller trigger guard. Yeah, slide that up to like that. Right, that's where I forgot to close off. Always gotta remember to kind of close off any area you're sort of working at. Nope, wrong color. 
this episode is probably not as rough as the first one was, but you'll probably also see that there is always room for improvement. So we'll just do that there. And now we'll patch this area back up. Yeah, I think it's mostly coming down to this stock where I want to do a little change to it. Because you want a grip of some kind coming down, but I don't know if you want more of like a rifle stock or a pistol grip or what for kind of a good Narcuga esque. Because you've got the front barrel that's kind of a sniper, you got the gilly netting of sorts overneath the frame. I do actually really like how the tail stock came out. It's going to be that grip. I almost think. I want to do something sort of like a reverse grip in a way. Like it comes back like this almost. Alright, that's part of down there. And okay, and we can see a few things that will. Let's try to get a little bit more cleaned up. This is one of the things when you work with layers is that sometimes you'll really easily see where you kind of messed up a bit, but nothing you can't fix with just a little bit of patience and time. that look a little better but again it's I think it's I need something underneath the netting as well as also changing up this back stock let's just redo that a bit until I guess right there will probably work yeah yeah so I think I want to make this more narrow I don't need it as fat as I kind of did there something more maybe like that Faster. Yeah, something a bit like that, and then I think something right ar along the front, too. Just a nice, simple little thing kind of sticking down and out. Oop, not quite like that sticking out. Almost like a secondary grip of sorts. And I think for up here... How I might want to have this done. I'm trying to think of the best way for it, because I don't want something where it's along the side. I want almost sort of like a Tommy gun in a way. Almost that extra uh, little bit of grip to it. So maybe I'll try doing something almost like there are the little indents of where you could wrap your fingers around. Like it, but I feel like I gotta change that up still. It's a little too uniform in color, I think. I don't know if I just need to. Let me take a look at how they did the bone here. Yeah, see, it just so stands out as ivory that I think I want to change that up for this just to give it a little something different. So maybe what I'll do is for the grip, we'll actually make this more of this color back here. And we'll give a few almost like little squares of sorts down that. We'll keep that pattern on the back end as well. Now let's see here. Do, 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 do. Like that, like that. Not too 
bad. I just want to add almost like a, maybe a, like a little bit of a bone nub of sorts, just to say that the tip is the same as the base. I think we'll also do something like that back here. Just make the little end there. And break that up with like that. I want to do the full kind of patterning like the other one did. Almost just something like a little bit of a minor pattern, just that kind of comes along and up. Actually, I don't think that's too bad for a look. Now, there is one thing I'm going to make a new layer of, and this will probably be the last touch for it. This is going to be FX. And what I want to do is we'll go up here, and with Narga's kind of barrel cover here, we're going to make another thing that kind of goes forward like this. Actually, let me just do that. Actually, no, I gotta really zoom in here to see how I've got this kind of planned out a bit. Because you'll see exactly what I mean in just a minute. And yeah, I better probably just for the sake of argument, we'll use this little monstrosity I created down here to show it off even better. Just get ourselves going up like that. Keep carrying that along. Yeah, let's just fill that in with the very dark. Okay, so it's just right over here that I actually somehow didn't catch this little corner here. Let's try that again. I hope they caught it this time. No. Okay, and now it's over at this ear here. I don't know how I managed to miss one at both corners, but I can manage that. Okay, so that should do it. Let's properly fill it in. There we go, didn't break this time. Okay, so how we want it is... That's basically our barrel, and then the little FX we're talking about will be from the sides here. And now we can fill that in. So let's say the bowgun is not loaded at the moment, so let me just take our eraser here. on the FX layer. So, yeah, we say the blowgun isn't loaded, so FX will be when it is loaded. But for when it's not... Just gotta see which one it... Okay, yeah, so this is the right layer. Perfect. Basically, this is an arrest. His bowgun's not loaded, there's nothing to it, there's no ammo in the barrel, you basically are going to have to reload to get it ready to fire again. When you do reload it, though... Let me just quickly zoom in here, just to hide this little bit. When you do reload it, you get Narga's kind of noteworthy... Oh, god damn it, really? Where did I... Okay, I see where I forgot to close up. And I mean, that probably ruined the big effect of it, but we'll show it off in just a moment. Is that when the bowgun is loaded, it almost gains Narga's little eye shine, where it's very bright red and you can kind of see the trails. 
So when there's ammo in it and you're ready to go with it, you get that little bit of a lure and kind of trail from it as you move. Because as a light bow gunner, you're not going to really be standing still. You're going to be moving quite a bit more than a lot of the other weapons to avoid taking damage, getting hit, stuff like that. There we go. Just that little spot bugged me. So something a little bit more like that, where you can see more of Narga's stealth bring brought into things. And I still, I'm sort of on the fence about how I want the grips and that to be on it, because... It's hard to have Narga as being both a light bow gun where you want to be stealthy and sneaky with it, but also kind of being more agile scout-like weapon. I do have to admit, I don't mind this one, but again, it doesn't scream stealth when it's a double barrel shotgun. But anyway, this is just kind of my on take on how I might think a Narga light bow gun could be done a little bit differently to give it a bit more unique of a look. And hopefully, who knows, maybe a modder will see some of these ideas, or if you guys have any other ideas, be sure to let me know in the comments. I'm always eager to hear feedback on what you think of the designs, or even if you have any monsters of your own or weapons you'd like to design, I'm open to any suggestions. I have no idea what the next monster is going to be. I just wanted to do this because Iceborne felt like kind of dropped the ball on some of the old style light bow guns. Like, a lot of them got pretty bad off. And this also let me, lets me cover a little bit of my favorite game franchise, Monster Hunter, on the channel. So, thank you very much for watching, Hunters. If you do like these little things, be sure to watch every Monday for more Build a Bowgun series. And, like I said, if you have any suggestions or recommendations about what bowguns you might like to see redone or what monsters could use a new bowgun, be sure to let me know. Until I see you all in the next episode, please remember, as always, to take care and stay alive.